All right, everyone. It's 90.3 KEXP. We broadcast live here in Seattle, Washington, and all over the world at KEXP.org. And my name is Troy Nelson. Such an exciting day here in the KEXP live room because I am joined with this fantastic band, Pom Pom Squad. And Pom Pom Squad, if you're all ready, let's do this. You ready? You said open up your mouth and tell me what you mean. I said I'm gonna marry the scariest girl on the cheerleading team. Close your teeth into my neck and watch me burst. Tomorrow. Pom Pom Squad live here on KEXP.
take a good hard look before I go and mess it all up again. I saw someone you were with me soon now. I wanna be just like them. She said, I can't have this conversation now. I know exactly what she meant. Cause I second that I'm
did a KUXP. You did it. Yes, Pom Pom Squad. <laughs> Sounding fantastic. Thank you. Yes, and we've been loving this album, Death of a Cheerleader. And uh, we've just been playing it a lot and uh, loving it and seeing all the good reviews and everything across the board. It's got to be, uh, with all the hard work that you've put in, it must be pretty re rewarding for you. Yeah, I, I'm really proud of Death of a Cheerleader. I think I tend to be really um, quite hard on myself. Right. And uh, this is a project that I, I feel just really happy with how it came out and, and just really proud of, yeah. of it. Well, you did it, though. You, you, like, you made it happen. You know, I, we, ha we all have so many friends that have all these ideas and all these projects, and they start them, but they don't finish them. Isn't it nice to like start something and actually finish it, put it out there, and back it up? Yeah, I'm actually, I think, incapable of finishing things I start. <laughs> like, even with, like, I really love video games, and I started playing this game that's like apparently one of the top 10 hardest games of all time. What's it called? Cuphead. Oh, I love Cuphead. I love Cuphead. <laughs> hey, I beat Cuphead. I did, too. You did? I did, it because I could not lose wow <laughs> I couldn't, you, you, I couldn't you die like 3,000 times in that game 100% and yeah. that final like in the casino with the devil and like that took me about as long as it took me to do like the whole game oh, let alone that great. last day. it was Dr. Call's robot for me this is getting very like neat very hyper specific mm -hmm. Cuphead Hive yeah it's an amazing What's up? amazing game uh, have you ever played Celeste I haven't. Everyone keeps telling me to play Celeste, but I don't want to. It, I mean, it's about as hard as Cuphead. I know, but <laughs> if I start it, I won't stop. And also, Cuphead is just, not that Celeste isn't pretty, because mm -hmm. it is, but yeah. Cuphead is, like, hand-drawn. Yeah. I'm obviously obsessed with things from, like, the 40s, 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. so it's, like, perfectly in that. 30s, 40s cartoon Totally, yeah. Space. Uh, yeah, hand-drawn. And, and, and I love when painted. things are, like, I mean, <laughs> this is another thing that I feel like is very obvious by... What I do is I love like a loyal interpretation of yeah. of something. So I just appreciate how much work went into something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think it took them like seven or eight years to make that. They took out like a second so. mortgage on their house. That's right. And look at the success though, you know? And uh, yeah, I love Cuphead as well. You started this by yourself, uh, this project. How did you meet all these wonderful musicians along the way? And it became a band. Yeah, I, I mean, I met everybody in very different ways. Um, I've known Alex, but basically everyone... Or <laughs> both of you I met playing shows. Alina auditioned, and Camelia recorded on uh, the first version we did of Red With Love. Uh, and we've been hanging out ever since we met at a farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, discovered through talking that we knew a lot of the same people, because Camelia knows everyone that's ever lived. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, she's a, a brilliant violinist, and mm -hmm. I feel very lucky that she came on this tour. Um, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, Shelby and Alex is kind of a, a magical story because essentially I had like fired a whole band like a couple days earlier. Um, and Alex came to the second show I ever played as Pom Pom Squad and just continued to follow because he liked it. Uh, <laughs> I said, you know, you liked it, right? It was, was okay. So, yeah. And then uh, Shelby, I met at the show, the next show I did after I fired the band. And, um, I was playing a solo set, which I really don't like to do. And you came up to me after, and you were like, why don't you have a band? And I was like, I don't know. Um, and so you wanted to jam. And then Alex also happened to be at that show. So it was kind of this very serendipitous moment for all of us. Mm -hmm. And you and I have something in common. You and I both went to school for audio engineering. You went to NYU, and I went to Full Sail in Florida. Oh, my, I'm so familiar with Full Sail because mm -hmm. I uh, lived in Orlando. For oh, wow. Yeah, well, Full Sail is yeah, right outside of Orlando in Winter Park. And, yeah. and we both went to school for it. And I also um, am a, and I'm putting quotes up, musician as well. Uh, and I noticed how it informed the way that I make music or record music at home. What uh, did that education do for you as far as writing songs? Like, how did that inform your songwriting or how you craft and record music? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it was a very intentional decision. I, I went to NYU to study acting initially and really fell in love with music while I was there. And I think the first times that I was recording with people, I felt very pushed around because I know a lot about music and I love music, but I didn't really know how to make recorded sounds sound the way that I wanted them to. Um, and so when I transferred to, it's called the Clive Davis program, I, uh, you know, got really into engineering specifically. And I think it's just allowed me to expand my sonic palette. Like I never thought that I would do an album with violins or marimba or, you know, any kind of orchestral arrangement. Um, I also, you know, 
demoed pretty much all of Death of a Cheerleader either while I was in college or during the pandemic. And so I was just kind of sitting there in logic and, you know, making everything with MIDI sound the way that I wanted it to so that eventually when I started working with Sarah Tudson, I could kind of send her everything and say, you know, here's what I want uh, and here's how I want everything to sit. And she's also a phenomenal engineer and yep. producer. So Yeah, she's great. Uh, Illuminati hotties. She's yes. in. Uh, lastly... Uh, speaking of hard work, and I watched the video, and I can only imagine how much hard work went into it, but you actually did pretty much a shot-for-shot shot, uh, <laughs> remake of Not A Surf's Popular. You covered the song. Uh, what, where did your love of Not A Surf and Matthew Cos stem from? Where did that, uh, what were the beginnings of that? Well, um, I think I heard Popular for the first time when I was in high school, and Pom Pom Squad was like a very tiny baby embryo of an idea, and... You know, I really love uh, like Americana tropes and I also really love um, grunge and uh, it was sort of like this perfect marriage of both of those things. And so kind of like, you know, I remember when I started Pom Pom Squad, I was like, well, what if it was sort of a 60s girl group situation, but with like cheerleaders, you know, which I feel like I've accomplished actually yes, you have. <laughs> in the past couple of <laughs> years. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I came to the song. Uh, and then I made a joke on Twitter about recreating the whole video and I share a label with Not A Surf, which I did not know uh, or didn't think about at the time. And Matthew saw it and he was like, this would be a great idea. And I was like, OK, I have to I have to finish the joke. And so I did. <laughs> it's almost like you put it out there in the universe and it just swung right back. And it, speaking of serendipity once again. Yeah, like, that's been happening a lot lately, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so you, I heard you shot it at the exact same location where they shot it. Where is that at? Bayonne High School in Bayonne, New Jersey. Bayonne, New Jersey. Bayonne. Bayonne. Alex always says, if it's from Bayonne, leave it alone. <laughs> Yeah, we got a new a Jersey boy over here. Uh, I lived in Hoboken for a short stint. Oh, yeah. did, did I, I mean, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would travel under, uh, I'd, I'd take the path train into Manhattan, but lived in Hoboken. That, so I wasn't like deep into New Jersey, but That's I That's the Alex Mercury story. Yeah, I'm, I'm a commuter. <laughs> you a commuter? Yeah, awesome. he's been coming to band practice uh, twice a week for like four years from New Jersey. <laughs> Um, so we love them, awesome. love them very much. But yes, Bayonne, um, and we actually got to work with the real Bayonne football players and cheerleaders, which was surreal because they put on like a, a you know, there were some of the girls like put on the uniforms and they were like, oh my God, it's like we're from the seventies. <laughs> and I felt very sad <laughs> in that moment. Well, it's an awesome remake and a wonderful, wonderful cover. I emphasize people go to YouTube, check out Pom Pom Squad's cover of Not A Surf's popular, but also check out their album, Death of a Cheerleader. I'm very excited for the future of Pom Pom Squad. And once again, we are champions of your project here. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having us. That's right. That is Pom Pom Squad live here on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.